When you're designing very low energy buildings, there are four kind of main areas you need to get right, in my opinion. Uh, the first is you need to get the design of the orientation of the building right. You need to get lots and lots of insulation. You need good quality doors and windows, and you need air tightness. Now, they're absolutely crucial, those things, uh, as a kind of the base level for any good, sustainable uh, piece of architecture. On top of that, there's loads of other things you can add. But if you get those right, you're a long way to getting there. We uh, obviously have enormous amounts of insulation, as, as you've seen over, over the build. So then air tightness was a, was a big, important thing that I wanted to try and achieve with this building. Um, and that's really achieved in this case because the whole of the, the floor and the back of the building up to the roof, if you like, is all underground, taped because it has a lot of damp proofing, uh, waterproofing. Uh, systems that effectively are airtight. Then you have the roofing system over the flat roof for the green roof. That again is multiple layers of waterproof stuff, which is airtight. So then we got to the front of the building, we've got the exterior walls, which are the concrete block. Now, in order to get airtightness on concrete block, you need to have a wet plaster. So we've used uh, uh, the cement plaster. Not only it becomes the, the plaster finish or rendered finish, it is also the airtightness layer. But then you have junctions. So there were lots of junctions in this building. For example, here you've got a window which is taped in both externally and internally, taped to a piece of membrane and taped onto this concrete block wall. This bit of concrete block here, because we're going to bridge over it with a cement board, we've had to use air tightness paint behind the cement board. We had to use air tightness paint on the junctions between the supporting block walls and the roof and at the edge of the, the roof to the walls as well. In fact, there were lots of little areas where we had to, to work with air tightness. So, and again, this is actually our air tightness layer on the outside of the building in this one location. And you can see lots of taping here and wherever a cable comes through, it comes through a special rubber gland. The roof is airtight, the back wall is airtight, the floor is airtight, comes around and connects to the front blocks, which are then airtight on the inside because of the, the render. But one area people do get wrong a lot with air tightness is where the services come into the building. So we've had to do quite a lot of work around that through here. So around utilities, where utilities come into the building, this is where you often get problems. Because what you have to understand is that in a building about this size, in order to get towards passive levels of air tightness, all of the holes added together can't be much bigger than a squash ball. So every single joint, pinprick, door handle, where pipe comes in, where windows connect. When you add all of those little holes up, the cracks between joints and blocks and everything, it can be no bigger than about a squash ball in order to get to, to really airtight buildings. So you have to think about everything. So the services come through the wall at this point, they then separate into this large plywood box, and then we can bring the services out in separate locations and we can actually tape them and make sure that they're airtight. So you can see here, this is the the flow and returns for the heat main from the cottage, the MVHR ducts, these are ducts for later installations, We've got electric cables, etc. All of that has to be completely airtight. You can also see up around the roof lights how we've taped from the concrete deck, which is sort of on one level our air tightness layer, up into the inside of the roof light. So the ambition was to get towards passive house levels of air tightness. And, and what they do in order to test that is they put a big fan in the door, shut everything up, put a big fan in the door, and then you suck the air out of the building and measure the amount of air coming through the building. Now the target that you're looking for is about 0.6 meters cubed per meter squared per hour at 50 pascals. Uh, uh, and we, well, we got 0.6, I think about 0.62, which, in Passive House rounds down to 0.6. So we, we got there and I was going to film it and, and, and <laughs> get it on camera. And to be honest with you, I was a coward and I didn't know it was going to work because I was relying on a lot of sort of first principle things that should have worked, like the way we bonded the top of the concrete slab to the top of the walls using a black sort of slightly rubbery tape so it would squash on and get air tightness. But I didn't know. So there was a lot of things that unknowns that we were trying for the first time and they've worked so I was beyond ecstatic when I when I got the result I was so pleased and what that really means is that this building now it's uh, 
very, very cold out there. It's been below freezing for a couple of days, pretty much during the day as well as at night. And this building is warmer than the bungalow that I'm renting and there's no heating on in here. So, you know, it works. If you build it right, you need almost no heating whatsoever. So I, it, was a, it was a huge challenge uh, and, and uh, a real sense of achievement and actually a testament to the guys who built it, who've done a fantastic job of keeping an eye on all of those details and making sure they're done right. So really, really great day.